Welcome to Ready Layer One. It's a crypto podcast that focuses on the near ecosystem. And this week, we have a really exciting episode with the CEO and co-founder of Metapool, Claudio. Joe, what'd you think about this? This was a this was a cool one. It was. It was. I mean, we could have talked for hours and hours. Uh, Claudio is really smart. Really gets the whole space. Uh, has a great story of how you know Metapool came about and you know how they got to where they are today. Uh, there's a lot of great takeaways just about, again, building in Web3 in general. Uh, a lot to learn about Metapool if you're interested in liquid staking. Uh, it, it was a tremendous uh, uh, conversation. Yeah, exactly. He, you know, like there's the whole idea of liquid staking, which we, you know, he talks about it, but there's also lots of resources on that that we can like add some links to. Then he got into really good concepts of like the history of how he created Metapool with his, his co-founder and all these other different things, yeah. which were really fascinating. The importance of decentralization. Yep. Uh, the importance of security. Mm-hmm. It, like really, I thought it went in a really cool direction and then ended with Meta Yield, which is another product, which is a really cool sort of crowdfunding IDO sort of mixture thing. So yeah, make sure you listen and check that out. Um, I hope you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Ping to Discord. You hopped on there, man. You were firing. You were helping people out heavy that first week. Yeah, I feel like you were just like on the Discord, like explaining how it works. So I appreciate that. Yeah, man. yeah, no, no, no. That's what a community launch is all about, right? It's, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little bit overwhelming for sure. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, you, you just have to do the the work. That's that's part of the deal, right? What exactly is Metapool? And then we'll get to like an explain like I'm five, what Metapool <laughs> is. Very well. So uh, hello, everybody. And to everybody listening on to this podcast and this video po- podcast as well. So my name is Claudio. I'm one of the co-founders of Metapool. Uh, we're the first liquid staking solution on Near and Aurora as well. And basically right now our focus for Metapool is to help uh, Near protocol be more decentralized and more importantly to help Near be more capital efficient. We'll go into the details on it. But, uh, but yeah, our, our first and foremost, our mission is to help Near be more decentralized and improve the Nakamoto coefficient which is a way of how you measure decentralization on a proof of stake network. And so, yeah, it's, it's, and, and it's, and to be honest, it's, um, if you are in the ecosystem, this, the job of decentralization is for everyone participating in the network. Um, it, it's, it's the way that you bring value into the ecosystem. And that's by basically helping, helping near be more decentralized and uh, permissionless and censorship resistant. Right. And so, that's uh that's what Metapool is. Uh, we'll go into details and I'll explain it uh, to you if it's as if you were five. But the most important part of it is we are allowing near token holders to not have to choose between staking, which is the mechanism that near uses in order for uh, in order to secure the network, um, or participate in the protocol by using near uh, for transaction purposes. Or, or just paying for gas, right? We know it's minimum, but at the end of the day, uh, the near, near token holders have to choose, do I stake or do I participate in the network? And with Metapool, uh, you can do both because what we do is basically we delegate uh, your near to more than 74 validator nodes in the network. Then we mint a liquid token called ST near or stake near. And this token represents the near that you delegated plus the accruing near rewards every 13 hours. This is a very important part in keeping the price peg for ST near because every 13 hours we're calculating the amount of rewards that of the total amount of near being delegated through Metapool. And that's how we calculate the, the, the price of ST near, the amount of accruing rewards every 13 hours. When I first went on to Metapool, that was the one thing that I just took me a second to get my head wrapped around. Like if you put in, 100 near and if you would just staked 100 near normally and left it there you'd get the percentage that you get if you know minus the validator fee when you do metapool you're still getting all the same rewards minus the validator fees and maybe a little other fee but it's it's minor so it's not like you lose the value by using metapool that was like it took me a second to figure that and you don't almost realize that until when you pull back out your your uh, stake near and you swap it. And you're like, oh, there, I have more near now. <laughs> you know, like it's like, oh, there's the 103 near. Yes, th- th- definitely. That's been part of the feedback that we're getting, right? And 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 we're 
working with Boshin and the and the UX team to to make it more user friendly. We understood and we understood the shortcomings of launching first and mm. quick, uh, which is not always pretty, right? And and uh, I'll quote like Reed Hoffman on this one, right? So if you launch a product and you're not ashamed on how it looks like, then you probably launched too late. <laughs> and so, so like definitely that. for me was, um, I told Lucio, my co-founder and, and the mastermind behind the design of Metapool, uh, he told me, hey, well, it, it looks like this. I'm like, it's fine, man. Like, let's launch it, see if it sticks. It does what it does. I'll go in and I'll explain and I'll do all this stuff. Because when we launched, we were actually just um, five people, right? It was Lucio, wow. myself, Lautaro, a, an ex-developer for the, from the team, Daniel, Alan, and that's it. Cool. We had, of course, the beta testing network, right? The beta testers, shout out to everybody there. Uh, bearded guy and a couple of them that I, I just, they're, <laughs> they're just weird names anyhow. Uh, but they supported us, right? But we were just five guys there. Uh, and eventually, right now, we've grown to more than, than 20. But it's very important to understand that, that yes, it's, it's difficult to grasp the value proposition out of the get-go. Hmm. You know that we need to do a better job there. Uh, the thing is, been, we've been a little bit busy <laughs> entertained by building other products. Um, but anyhow, just happy to, to uh, uh, yeah, be where we are. We know that we, under, we need to do a better, a much harder effort on the education part. I think we, we're still yeah. in, in, in a tunnel vision, uh, a scenario where we think everybody should know. And, and that's a, a pretty big mistake we're doing as an ecosystem. Agreed. And I think also as an industry, right? Like, sure. but anyhow, let's, let's not, let's not get too, yeah. too depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the bright side. And the thing is that we've been on mainnet for 12 months and three days. So Congratulations. We're really, really happy about that one. Knock on wood. We haven't got any hacks or anything. We've done our audits. The near foundation and the near core team have looked at, uh, at the Metapool protocol. Uh, quite a bit. Uh, and, and the reason for this is that they delegated 1.5 million near, I think it was in February. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not, a, it's, it, and, and it was where, when price action was a little bit better than today. So mm -hmm. right now you might not yeah. seem like much, but in February was, a, it was quite, quite a bit of a, of, of a, of a, I, I will not call it a bet, but it's just a boat of confidence, right? Yeah. And so, so anyhow, so really, really excited about being here in the near ecosystem, continue building on near on Aurora as well. And, and yeah, happy to discuss the ins and outs. I'd like to kind of jump in with just so people kind of understand when you talk about delegating to validators. So, so near, so mainnet on near, uh, the, the top 100 validators are the ones that are actually doing the validating. So there are more than a hundred validators uh, on mainnet, but only the top 100 right now. And that's going to change with chunk validators and everything else. But how do you guys right now determine that 74 that gets delegation from you guys? So one, and, and this goes back to our ethos of decentralization, right? When we started, we did, the only thing that we looked for was that, of course, performance uptime. Second, the amount of rewards that you're giving. And then that you have a low fee, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and we understood also that was not, that should not be written in stone. It was just for us to bootstrap. So we delegated to everybody, right? And we have, it was a weird weird thing because I was going to East Denver this year. And there were people like, hey, uh, you're delegating like uh, 35,000 or 45,000 near to us. I'm like, yeah. And what's the catch? I'm like, no, there's no catch. That's what we do. <laughs> and, and, they yeah. like, and, they were, and they were like, okay, okay, fine crazy Mexican guy. Uh, but anyhow, uh, thank you very much for supporting us. And well, thank you, man. If it wasn't for you, then there's a, we need to understand the fundamentals, right? And, and sometimes I think people miss that. Yes. They only look at, and, and, and this is, um, we're discussing this early on at, at, at the Aurora AMA that we did a few, a few minutes ago, hours ago, sorry, is that the underlying fundamentals is is if the network is secure enough, decentralized enough, and permissionless enough, you will create value on top of it. Yep. It will accrue in value because people are building on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then you get your price action, whatever you come, came in for, right? Mm -hmm. 
and, and people sometimes are, are, are really, and, and this is no, normal human nature, right? So they, they only, me, myself, and I. And, and here's where definitely Lucio and, and, and me are, arrive at that conclusion is like, do we want to build, because we're kind of like, yeah, we're, 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 I don't have a lot of gray hair, but anyhow, we're kind of the old school, the old guard <laughs> in, in, in ages kind of sense, right? We're Same. totally, totally <laughs> noobs, totally noobs on, on the on crypto, don't get me wrong. But it, it's like, do we want to build what we were, we're com- the same playbook where we have come from, Web 2.0, right? And like, no, like, can we build, flip it around? Hmm. Can this be community hmm. run? Can this provide value first and then accrue value second? And so, and, and here we are, we're battle testing it as we go, right? We're, we're 12 months in. Uh, yeah. But then, um- yeah, go right ahead. I was just going to jump in and say, like, this is an interesting conversation that's happening within sort of different eras of crypto, right? Like decentralization to me is like, yeah, that if you don't have decentralization, what are, what are we doing here? Like Web 2's got centralized down. Like it's if you want centralized, go there. Really great. So but then there's like sort of a newer sort of I don't know. It's been like the last year where they're like, we don't care about decentralization. And I'm like, well, but but. I don't even know what to say because, you know, especially if you go back 2017, 2016, you go 2014, 15 people, it's like, you know, <laughs> totally different. So I, I don't know how to change or like share how important that is. It's educating, Jared. The thing is, and, and we're not doing a good job. Let's be honest about that. But it's not, it's not the, 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 the newcomer's fault mm-hmm. you know? because the newcomers come with a narrative, right? They came here for the narrative. Yeah, and the narrative right now is is and 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 don't get me wrong, that's why I came here as well, right? Uh, so how, a little bit of a backstory here. So I got exposed to Near through their CoinList offering. So I I am yeah. an early investor in Near. Nice. And um. And 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 I also did like Solana. I did uh, Avalanche, uh, all the CoinList ones that that I that I could get my hands on. Nice. Because I was keen on building on them. I. I invested, let's call it like that, nine months of time and, and resources into building, for example, my first one uh, was uh, Blockstack or Hyro or Stacks or what, how you want to call it. And, and it was not a good experience, right? Like testing was failing. We did the hackathons and that post and the, te- and the testing was failing. And, and you need to understand that I was moonlighting with other guys on this one. And so 6, 7 p.m. and then you put your... You, you put your hoodie on, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and get all cryptic. And then the testnet is run, running, right? And you're like- What you, chain was I, this on? What was the testnet uh, not running on? Block, block stack. Okay, gotcha. And and like, fuck. Sorry, mind my English. It's <laughs> like, I only have two hours. Like, dudes, I only got, it's like, it's like 7 p.m. I need to get my kid to sleep. So yeah. I just have two fucking hours. Yeah. I don't have time for your testnet to be rebooted, mm-hmm. and like and 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 so anyhow, we ended up the with the uh yeah we got some prices and whatnot, some recognition on it. But then again, it was like if that's not running, then who are we kidding, right? Mm-hmm. And so that that was a failure. Then we did like Solana, and then yeah, Solana's well, it was running good, but just building on it is just it it, it is not for the faint of heart. You do have to understand, you do have to have a good understanding of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then yeah, it's just, uh, I'm not going to say that it's, 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 it's built on top of like a house of cards, but it's, it, it it doesn't, it's so open that it leaves for so much room for error, Mm. so much room for error. And it, and, and there's no, at that time, I'm talking 2000, 2019, 2020. Um, yeah, it's, it's normal, right? But at the end of the day, you, you do have to have a base, right? Right. You do have to have a base to build on top of. Like a, a solid testnet, please, for fuck's sake. Solid <laughs> testnet. Okay, documentation, not good um, good enough. Fine. Even Web 2.0 companies do a terrible job at that one. Um, okay, fine. And then Celo was another one, two mobile, mobile base, one into ba- bank the unbanked by two, by, by a German team talking about banking the unbanked in Latin America. I'm like, no, dude, sorry. That narrative is not going to stick with me. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry about it. Yes, you got good good tech, whatnot, but uh, vision, leadership, I don't see it, right? And then and then near was my last try. 
oh, I did eat global. So I did eat, uh, eat global. <laughs> and then we're like, hey, yeah, this runs, blah, blah, blah. DeFi summer. Uh, okay, impossible. Like, hmm. I was like, okay, I built this. I can't run it because you guys are just farming and doing this all crazy things, which is good for you, right? And I hmm. missed that boat totally. Like people gave me a heads up on Uniswap, gave me a heads up on several stuff there, like Curve and whatnot. And I was like, uh, yeah, fine, but I'm, I want to build. I don't really want to price action for me. It's like, who cares? Same. And, 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 and that was it. And then near was my last try. To be honest, I was going to say, you know what? All you guys, you, all you guys, you can just go, <laughs> go, <laughs> go grab your, everything you got and, and, and put it where, where the sun don't shine because I'm yeah. fed up with this because I'm fed up with not being able to launch products. And I'm fed up of not having the resources to build. Right. Like I, 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 I'm not even thinking about building a business. It's just, can I have the resources to build? Can this be like sustainable in one way and the gas fees are not going to eat me up? Yeah. And luckily enough, yes, okay, that ran, right? Tesla was good. Documentation was really well done. And just a side, side story, I, I... Got to know Ilya when he was uh, uh, in Google. At that time, in the Web 2.0 space, I was working for a, a Google developer partner, and and I think it was Google I/O or a GDG a meetup in in San Francisco or in Mountain View. I can't recall, but anyhow, I saw him talk about TensorFlow. And definitely bright, bright, bright guy, right? Mm -hmm. oh, right now, that's not uh, that cannot be uh, uh, argued, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was this guy. <laughs> and, and this is like, it's, he's, not, he's not a gringo. No, no, he's not. Because we with Mexicans, right? What is he? His accent is strange, man. <laughs> well, and, and, and that, oop, and then it's Google. I, I was, yeah, drinks and whatnot. Yeah. You forget about it, right? But then during the coin list offering, he, like I saw his, his, uh, his profile. I was, okay, this guy, I know this guy. Okay, he's Ukrainian. Okay. And I said to my friends, hey guys, the, he, this guy that we talked, you know, this, the TensorFlow guy. Oh yeah, he's Ukrainian. That's why. We were, we we're not, he's not French, but uh, <laughs> I don't know where he's from, right? Uh, but anyhow, so, and, and yeah, fast forward, right? Met Lucio through launching Near Hispano. That was mm -hmm. really good. Like that was serendipity at its like purest form, right? Mm. So we, we did, <laughs> we, what did we, try? okay, Claudio, now you try to build what? I tried to build decentralized document management. That's what I wanted to build. Okay. Uh, because that was that's I, I used to work for an Atlassian developer partner, so I was really into Confluence, Jira, and all that tech stack, uh, which some people love to hate. <laughs> and uh, and so a lot of customers were asking, like, okay, data is that yours? Is it mine, or is it AWS or Google Cloud? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then and then it's like the decentralized data storage of course mm -hmm. claudio okay yeah fine then okay you go to the rabbit hole okay I, ipfs okay well it's not it's not quite there okay mm -hmm. uh <laughs> a file coin okay well it's kind of not there and but st but still i was like that was my use case and I, if it worked it worked but for me it was building a product there's near protocol and everyone we interview there's one thread that is like every builder says and it's that it's they wanted to build because of the, the tech behind it. And the hardest thing to market in this entire space is tech because people it's so complex. But also, you, you know, it, Joe, the, the, the devs, the tech people are like, oh, yeah, building on it at what point, And this might be happening soon. Maybe the narrative will shift. So do you think with Metapool and some other projects I'm definitely down to talk about? Do you think that narrative could maybe change? Do you think there's some way that like as a community or some like. What's the, what's the solution if there is one if, or an idea? That's such a great point of, you know, if you have had, especially if you had experience, like Claudia, you were saying, like of trying building on other chains. And then all of a sudden, like you come to a place like Nier and you, you're able to actually just do the work and you're not messing around with tooling all the time. And you're not messing around with like just trying to get started you can actually just do the actual building. It's such a different perspective of that. And that's why I think Nier has focused so heavily on developers because they know what they have, you know? Uh, I mean, Jared, we recently was talking about on one of our episodes about the JavaScript 
you know, uh, SDK now. I mean, that's so huge, but it's not sexy right like it doesn't sell to anybody you know only only like devs like yeah yeah that's exciting but that doesn't then bring the users so i i like the idea claudia that you said that you know if you can start to enable people to build really great stuff and and let them you know be able to do that easily that will help more bring people to the chain than i think anything else yeah like uh... And, and, and it's it's a catch twenty, right? Um, I, I think the the other the other day, uh, Alan, one of our devs, uh, was sharing like, okay, what are people on Twitter talking more about? And like Solana was like super big, mm-hmm. and Near was inexistent, right? Like ETH, Bitcoin, whatever. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's fine, but you do you do know why, right? Everybody talks about Solana, right? It's because it's unstable, and people complain. Where are they going to complain on Twitter? That's what they bent it, right? Right. And and to be honest, it is it's it's time will tell which narrative will sustain uh, throughout the next ten years, right? Um, and to be honest, much respect to what Solana has built as well, right? I'm not trying to to uh, discredit them one way or another. Um, the only thing is is that you need to stick to your guns. And I think here, Ilya has done, and Ilya, Alex, uh, the, the rest of the Pagoda team have done a really good job at like getting in front of it. But you also need to understand that it's a team, it's a team effort, right? So yeah. when we launched, when we launched a Metapool, our community launched last year, it, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it was a com- community effort. Uh, I, I, at that time, I had like really good relationships with most of the guilds because I was also a guild leader. And so I try to say, hey guys, this is what we're building. This is a community launch. Um, I'm not, we're not selling anything. The only thing that we that we're asking you is to secure, help secure the network and for it to become more decentralized. And that's a value proposition that is uh, uh, that the community can resonate with. And you understand that you're not trying to extract value out of it, right? In the case of the technology, is of course you're not extracting value. You're, you're, you're pushing value into the community. But then again, let's be honest. It's like when you're building, and, and this is something that I, I was also very, very upfront in, in the, the, the last Twitter spaces, that as, as a project, we have not done enough to educate. Because at the end of the day, well, you do what you do best. And what we do best is build. And we build products. But we need to also get our head out of the sand and understand that we need to do this other work, right? Yeah. That's that's why Will, that's why Wyatt, Guillaume are here, the community team with Aliona, Brian, uh, I don't care. It's like th- they're there, right? And but we understand that we have given them free freedom to 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 do what they do best, but we have not provided the tools in order for them to perform, right? Or or to do or to do the work expected by the community. Mm-hmm. And so and, and, and this is something that it, near as a, is at a crossroads, right? They can build good, good tech. And, and, and Hasid from Dragonfly can, can attest to that. He, he said, we invested in them because of them, right? Because they, we knew they could build good tech. They had the capacity to do the, whatever it needed to do in order to make it work. And so, uh, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's always the meme from, from, from Balmer, you know? developer, developer, developers, right? It's like, uh, uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, you need to understand that, our two, that it, it, it needs to have, there needs to be a symbiotic relationship with value creation. Mm-hmm. I'm here, I built what's, what's the value creation for the community and for, my, and for my team or my group or my project, X, Y, Z. And that's it's something that we're trying to figure out as an ecosystem, right? Um, and, exactly. and yeah, yeah. And so, so what is it that we're doing on our part with Metapool, right? So we have, uh, we're, we're, we're helping the new wallets that are coming into the near ecosystem. And we just launched, well, well, we would launch a, two months ago, a liquid staking SDK. So that means that anybody can come in and they can use that SDK in order for them to provide liquid staking through their platform. It is still a little bit alpha beta. Um, we need to give it battle tested a little bit more. It's already been used in our in our wallets, extension wallets. So that's it's been kind of battle tested. 
um, but now we're releasing it to the to the to the public, right? We need and and this is the thing. Yes, we built it, but now it's time to market it, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and 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 so you can't do both, right? So, so you need to be you need to have a complementary team. Yeah, and this marketing. So um, this is kind of where Web two and tech companies have it down. They've 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 had a couple decades of marketing, right? So. SaaS companies, let's say like near as a SaaS company, right? So any SaaS company I've ever worked at has usually three teams that are always should be in sync, product, marketing, sales, right? Like those are your leaders, product, massively strong at near. And then if you look at all the dApps that build on it, those are all the product lines of near. I mean, but it gets decentralized, which gets weird and gets kind of hard with like global campaign pillars and stuff. And uh, why did I see you shaking your head? So you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get too marketing on this, but then you need like an awareness campaign to drive people and how do we run them through a funnel this is where it's like so hard where you the the tech is built but the marketing is just getting put together and concepts don't go one to one but there's some comparison there's there's a, i just want to i don't know why it jump in let's introduce you so people know why it yeah. on who are you I introduce myself i'm the social media manager at uh, metapool working under claudio has been uh, fantastic and i'm relatively recent to the space i think i joined at the end of 2019 2020 which uh so i i think i can offer a little bit of perspective it seems like there's like a, a cascading gap almost in education between web 2 and web 3 it's like you have to know you have to know what crypto is. Then you have to know what near protocol is and what its value proposition is. Then you have to understand liquid staking. Then you have to understand why Metapool is good. And so we have to, near is fighting up here and we have to fight our way all the way back through that line of education, through people who are used to understanding only web two to get users into our space, which is I think during a bull market always gonna be difficult for projects who are of our size, who are maybe not on a top five blockchain. Um, and, and this, this goes to your point, too, about what Alan was saying with Solana. Like, Solana is the most Googled, and sure, no slight to their team or anything, but it's because it breaks. But no press is bad press in the sense of people looking into crypto. On that front line of education, people know what Solana is more than near because Solana is at the forefront of everyone's mind. Even if it's not for a great reason all the time, there's, there's just this back and forth between education and, and the, the gamification of DeFi, where people are just looking to get rich immediately. Hmm. that is all tied together that has to be combated against before you know projects like metapool start to take top stage because where i see crypto going in 25 years is you know really becoming a major player against cfi and all these things have to fall into place before we can say 20 percent with us or two percent interest with a bank where do you pick you know that's the end goal at least in, in my marketing mind that that that's really well put, man. Uh, I like that. I want to see the infographic, the the one pager of you showing those four areas because that's really important. Because like like Metapool, yeah, it makes sense. You take your near. If you're gonna stake your near with a validator, cool. But if you want to decentralize it, it's kind of weird to go through and pick forty validators and stake with each one individually. That takes time and a lot of. That's just a lot of work. What am I keeping an Excel sheet and tracking it, or seventy four validators, or <laughs> Then, and then my, my, my near still stakes, so I can't touch it anyway. It's, it's out. It's like, forget it, set it and forget it. Or you can put into Metapool. That all gets done in the back end. And then you get, a, you get a stake token that you could just leave in your wallet, done, set it and forget it. Or you can then use that stake token around the ecosystem as other dApps and projects incorporate it. So it's like, yeah, like how do you just like tell you to someone new, like, yeah, that makes so much sense. Like, yeah, do it. Like, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> but you can't do that because there's so much. I mean, and we we all know from our our you know everyone's perspective of getting into crypto, we understand that that's you know a year plus long process of really becoming intimately familiar with what True. decentralization is and where that comes from, and and that's part of that that battle. But yeah. Oh man, why yeah, you and it, I need to talk? <laughs> it, it's no, and and it's the reason that that we uh, <clears throat> that we launched near Hispano, right? So when, when um, Manuel, Christian, Alan, uh, we got together and we said, okay, so there's, there's a, a gap here, right? Um, and so we went on board Spanish speaking communities. And so they were like, okay, yeah, well, we got NFTs. And I was like, no, man, like, <laughs> we're gonna just gonna do educate, just fundamentals, that's it. Hmm. And we're gonna bring in more developers. That's it. No, we're not gonna do any, giveaways and whatnot and xyz 
and 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 I I knew there were some projects got in and they were like whoa this uh, really and, and I and I was in, really an enforcer of that like whenever anybody come in hey blah blah blah, blah boom I just deleted and I, and I explained hey guys you know what gals as well this is just for education you can come in with your project but just if you educate you're good if you just want hey come here come here, blah, 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 then then sorry, like uh, I'm, I'm just gonna uh, not gonna let you, right? Because we need to understand that it's it's distracting, right? And it, and be mm -hmm. honest, it's the internet. You're in the internet. Like, it's distracting yeah. us fucking hell. And and you need to be really focused on what is it that you want to teach. For us, it was the fundamentals. Can can you understand a smart contract? Can you design it, right? Um, and more importantly, a custodial, non-custodial, right? Private keys public keys, right? And those fundamentals are the base for power users. Eventually, right? They will understand the basics, the fundamentals, and then they can grow. If they're a developer, the more the best. That means that they can develop. They will be develop, developing protocols, dApps, platforms with the fundamentals in mind. And so uh, it's just educating. At the end of the day, that's it, right? And 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 again, I'm and I I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we need to do a better job. Yeah. Uh, and and hopefully, um, near education has done. And, and to be and also, just tip up my hat, Sharif and the near university team have done a really great job. Yeah. But there's no amount of good and outstanding job that's going to be able to fill the gaps. Right. Correct. That's a good way right. to put it. And so, right. like, like, and we can complain. Hey, not enough. No, all right, all right. Let's, let's just take two steps back. If you think you can do a much better job, then okay, propose it, right? Yeah. But, but really understand not. Oh, well, we need to go to more universities. Hell no. We reached out to like uh, sixty or, or 60, 60 universities in with near Hispano, uh, helping near university, right? Where 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 is that? Well, well right. two hundred and so certified developers and whatnot. Yeah, fine. But it's not enough, and right. it will never be enough. That's the thing, and we need to be fine with that. Like it's it's not that the house is burning; it's just that we're building slow but slowly but surely, and we yeah. need to build solid foundations. And as protocols participating near, it is our responsibility. And I'm calling out. Like all protocols, right? NFTs, DeFi, whatever you want to call it, games. It is your job to also educate because it's like, and we've been spoiled. That's the reality of it. We've been spoiled because it's always a handout. It's like, no, well, pay me. Well, you want to extract value? You want to create value? Where, 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 where do you sit? And don't come masquerading as a sheep, right, as well. I think the important piece here is the focus on, like, what are projects trying to do to capture, you know, uh, I guess, not just users, but, like, that really true product market fit. And and that's the, the part that people get, I think, caught up in with crypto, is that everyone's trying to build something as, like, a gold rush. I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people are building things as, like, a gold rush. But, like, you know... And I don't know if it's just an age thing or we just all have short memories, but like if you were around for any part of like the web 2.0 craze, whether it was, you know, the early 2000s or the mid, you know, it's so like 2010 in that area, like that was all about like, can I build something that really engages people? I wasn't mm -hmm. asking Amazon to promote my stuff because I was on AWS. <laughs> like I was you know, trying to, I was leveraging what AWS allowed me to build quickly. And if I couldn't build something that gained traction, that is on me. And we seem to have forgotten that in Web3 a little bit. And we've gone to like where we're trying to push on that. So bringing back now to Metapool, you guys have really tried to, I guess, separate yourselves as like the, I guess, staking, you know, liquid staking uh, product on protocol on Near. How would you explain to someone that you are different than, let's say, uh, a Lanier or a Stater, somebody like that? Like, like why is Metapool unique in that regard? Yes. Um, 
for for one is we're we're also allowing people to stake wrap near over on the Aurora um, EVM, right? So so that's kind of the, the the most outstanding one right now. Um, second is we're the only one that the liquid staking smart contract is running on a DAO. So and that's that's our narrative, right? Our net narrative is we built Metapool to be community run. Mm -hmm. And that's our commitment. And I, I always, when I get a chance, I state it. So I, I am held accountable. And more importantly, you have a face, right? That's very important. Uh, people, and, and I know that's a little bit against the, the, the Web 3.0 ethos, right? A, a pseudonymous and whatnot. That's fine. But we will need to mature in that sense. Mm. Because we need to hold people, persons accountable for what they do. Mm -hmm. And if you want to participate in a protocol where it's run by pseudonymous people, that's fine. That's but just understand that you are taking risk in that, right? You are taking risk because then don't come back to the community or to the foundation and complain you've been rugged. Because yeah. you put, yes, it could be audited. Yes, fine, but that that doesn't mean you can it, you can't get rugged. Sure. And so so just be mindful of that, right? Lucio and myself, we come from the community and we've built for the community. Mm -hmm. That is something that nobody can take away from us. And that is definitely something that no other liquid staking solution on here can claim, right? So fully on organic, we didn't receive any grants. We did it. We, yeah, we got some backing, but after we did the community launch, right. as, after we took oh. out product market risk. And so- yeah. At the end of the day, and it was something that I discussed heavily with Lucio, right? Lucio was, okay, come on, come in. Let's get some resources from here and there. I'm like, no, no. If you, if this is, if you th say this, I'll trust you. I'll blindly trust you. If you say this thing runs, then let's just put a date on it and let's, let's launch it and let's see if it sticks, right? Mm. Long story short, 24 hours into the community launch, we had like $8 million in TVL. Uh -huh. at that time. Yeah. yeah, I think it was half a million, half a million year on just 24 hours. And so, and it's because also, it's not because we, uh, uh, two funny, funny guys, one guy from Argentina, one guy from Mexico, right? It's because we did bring in value to the ecosystem, right? Right. It was something so sorely needed. And so for us is that, it's just full on community focus, right? We will always put near token holders front and center of everything we do. That cannot be said by any of the other liquid staking solutions. And I do understand because most of them, they want to run it like a business. That's fine. Sure. It's, it, it, it's, 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 and this is the web three, the web three ethos. It's permissionless. If a company wants to come in and they want to compete, that's fine. But right. understand that that's a company. That's right. never going to be a DAO. It's never going to be community run. Fine. <laughs> and, and, and it is what it is, right? Um, but for us, no, we're building this in order for, for, to allow us to put a healthy protocol in front of the community and for it to be community run, right? And so, so those are the things that really, uh, I can say that are differentiate ourselves from the other liquid staking solutions. Yeah, yeah. no, I, that's, I mean, I think I love that message, you know, uh, can you just explain for our audience, you know, they hear there's probably the word DAO a lot. What does it actually mean in regards to like how you're using the DAO in Metapool and what does that really mean for like your contract and everything else? Yes, so so decentralized autonomous organizations and I'm gonna take a step back on that one, right? And we will start with a DOE, right? Decentralized organization first, right? It is running on a, on a Astro DAO, uh, which is a framework to, to uh, manage and run DAOs on Near, our liquid staking contract. Right now there are three council members in that DAO. Uh, one is Nor Wallets, representing uh, kind of like the private sector. Uh, then we have Open Charts Alliance, which represents the valid validator node network. And then we have Near Hispano, which is representing the on-chain communities. And so we'll be bringing more, more council members for sure. The, only, the, 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 the challenge that I, that, I, that I put in front of the community is help us bring in the governance to it, right? right. It's not an easy task, right? The autonomous in DAO is just, Right now, it's it's it's, it's uh, three five years away. Okay. Because 
it, it, to be honest, like you, you, you can you can go ahead and see, right? For example, we've been and and this is a shout out as well to 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 some of a uh, uh, of of uh, our inspiration and competitors as well, right? We've been in 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 constant contact with the with Lido, uh, Constantine, and the founders since day one, um, and they've kind of like been a little bit of consigliere, right? Like, yeah, well, the, the, the governance, and I was like, well, the governance, it's a whole other thing. Like, make right. sure that it's a healthy business, that, that you bring in a healthy protocol before you install governance. Mm -hmm. Because if not, then you're not, you're the, the, you, you will put the protocol at risk. Because if you're trying to make consensus on stuff that needs to be built uh, in order for the for the for the liquid staking solution or platform to be running, then then it's just gonna be uh, uh, it's gonna be a shit show, right? Because there's gonna be people pulling in from all sides. So first and foremost is just bring in a healthy protocol, and then slowly but surely uh, start start to uh, to build the governance around it. One of the big and so yes, so we have there's a there's an Astrodal on top of it. Um, right now. You cannot vote uh, on the on the front end on the user interface uh, through Astrid out. You need to do it with a command line inter interface. And so, so this post us post a, a challenge, right? We were really close with Astrid out. They kind of changed uh, their, their their roadmap. It was not high priority for them. And at the end of the day, we had like, okay, okay, not priority for you, but for us, we need to end the year. <laughs> And we need to battle test some voting mechanism on the UI with our governance token. So this is this is what we've been talking about the last couple of days in the different Twitter spaces. So we're going to be launching MetaVote uh, in at NearCon. We're going nice. and, and it's a way for us to leverage our governance token in a voting mechanism. This is not governance. I want to lay that clear. It's not that you're going to be able to vote on the upgradability of the smart contract. Not now. We will arrive to that point, but we need to understand how those steps look like mm -hmm. and, and also how engaged is the community in this process. Because people talk about DAOs, but they need to understand that it's, that is a, it is, it post, it, it, it's, a, it's a whole new product as well. And it's a product inside the product. And what this is, you do not want to build a ghost town, not for a DAO. Right. So in that sense, it is very important for everyone here to understand that in order for you, for in order for, I do not believe there's a successful DAO right now on any layer one. That's my two cents. And this is Claudio's opinion, not Metapool, okay? And not representing near or near Span or anybody. <laughs> this is my opinion. Yeah. There is no DAO right now that it has been efficiently run. And it and it poses more a distraction to the team than a supporting mm -hmm. element to it, and we really need to build that. And the, the, and and no, it's not all all apocalyptic, right? The great thing is that it, here we have the tooling for that, mm -hmm. and we have the support from Bigoda, and we have the support from from Near Foundation as well. But but the, we need to understand that it's a slow process, also. The ability yes. for 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 any company to to you, we're always gonna play catch up, sure. And I think people are not comfortable with that. People are like, oh, why are we so uh, this X Y C this A? Hey, if it were easy, like go right ahead, be my guest, do it. Yeah, make right. the repo, make your pull request, and 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 let's see if it if it gets approved, it gets merged, right? But any, anyhow. So it's a slow but slow process. So that's the DAO. That's when I'm talking about the Metapool DAO means that our, our liquid staking contract is upgradable via DAO, via DAO voting. And so that's set in place. Um, and we wanna work with the community to see how to make it work. Because as sure as hell, Lucio, myself and, and Blaze from Open Shards Alliance, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, <laughs> It's not, yeah, it's not something, there's no playbook. That's our take on, on, on DAOs, right? R right now, we're at though. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually going to make a post uh, pre, pre NearCon regarding this, right? Because we're going to be announcing MetaVoat. Right now, how we're going to be leveraging that is uh, through MetaYield, you will be able to use Meta 
to vote for the projects that are going to go into the crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about Meta Yield a little in a little bit, but just we are battle testing it, and and we're battle test testing it outside Metapool, so that way there's no no risk uh, in, in uh, put in place, right? Mm -hmm. And so so it, so yeah, so that's the DAO. Go right ahead, Joe. Shoot your shot. Uh, yeah, no, I actually was it's a really great segue. I was going to ask about like your token because um, you do have a token that's also associated with. Uh, and so, you know, right now uh, people are earning that token from a couple different places, you know, from both staking as well as, you know, uh, Burrow, I think, has as a reward. And I've seen some, I think maybe someplace else, but Cheddar Farms. Oh, Cheddar Farm. Yep. Yeah. So where like for right now, you talk a little bit about it's going to eventually help with some of the voting, but uh, what is the other use cases that you're thinking about for that token? Yeah, so so definitely first and foremost, uh, we're figuring it out, right? One of the and, and I want to explain myself as well. One of the reasons we took it out from the staking mechanism is it, it was that there was no use case for it, and so with that, it was it didn't make any sense to be uh, um, printing meta tokens just by by staking. Um, and so that's why we took it out. And then, then when we said, okay, so let's leverage this, let's put it on the, on the partner network. That way there is a, a, an incentive mechanism there. Right. Um, one of the biggest things that we want to do is we, what we were thinking is what's the underlying value we're providing? Who is metafetting directly from Metapool? And that's the validator network. And so one of the next steps we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, allocating a good amount of, of a good percentage of the delegated near to those validator nodes that are committed to the governance of meta of the of our of, of the DAO. And so so we're still working that out how that will look like. But it's definitely going to start the use case is going to start with the uh, giving validator nodes more more voting power in 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 the DAO. Um, because it directly, uh, it, they get direct benefits and they could be directly, uh, um, how can I say, um, they can get exposed to much, uh, much more delegated near as well. So, mm -hmm. so we will be, uh, um, discussing this a little bit, uh, a little bit more as we get, uh, near closer to near con, but that's the low hanging fruit. Then of course, then there's the, uh, the, uh, the mechanisms or the upgradability of the smart contract, the amount of fees that we're charging, the amount of fees uh, that we're also charging on the help on, on the liquidity swap pool. Um, it could be also the, the, the tre treasury management as well, right? So all of this, all of those things are, are, are definitely, uh, we're discussing that internally to understand what is the right steps into getting people involved? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can have a great governance structure and whatnot, but if there's no people voting and there's no people in engaged, then it doesn't make any sense to build it, right? And so, so that's why we're battle testing it right now with Meta Yield. Uh, then we'll battle test it a little bit more before we incorporate into Metapool. Uh, but definitely, it, our key question here is who's benefit, benefiting directly from the protocol. And so those will be more incentivized into voting, into the changes, into allocating more, more delegation, uh, into also deciding on certain partnerships as well. Um, but then again, it all comes down to delivering a healthy protocol so people can, can be incentivized to collaborate on something that is not fail-proof, but at least have... Uh, uh, withstand the test of time, right? And so, so that hopefully I answer your question, Joe. Another uh, project that you're also working in in the uh, Metapool ecosystem, which is Meta Yield. Do you want to explain to our listeners what that is and what everything about that? Yes, for sure. So, so I'll tell a little bit of a backstory on, on Meta Yield. So last year, M Metapool participated in IDO on a launch pad, and it was a very good learning experience, but more importantly, we saw some of the gaps. One of the clearest gaps that we saw is, of course, a launch pad only works on a, on a bullish market. If, if there's no bullish market, 
uh, I would not recommend anyone. I would recommend that people wait. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I, I, it's very important to, for people to understand and, and, and builders, entrepreneurs, that launch pads are tricky. And, and then the second thing that we, that we found out is that you're basically giving, giving away your tokens to the launch pad. So if the launch pad would like to would disappear one or two days before the launch, you're done. Right. You already signed off on your project tokens. And so, yeah, you could cry and say, hey, please return them or whatnot. But if it's permissionless, at the end of the day, you already gave them away. And also the smart contract behind most launch pad is really strict. And I do understand the reasons why. Because, of course, you want that not to be able to be hacked because it is the smart contract. It is retaining your the project tokens, and it's going to be retaining the backers tokens as well. So I understand that smart contracts there are the, the, the project is incentivized for them to not be upgradable. But then again, there's stuff that you might miss a few use cases. For us is, yes, of course, the smart contract, um, the, the smart contract allowed NEP-141 tokens to be, to be um, exchanged for another NEP-141 token. It could be native near or it could be another token. In this case, we put our token as senior, right? We said, hey, it supports this, perfect. But then it was like the smart contract itself, was, since it was not upgradable, it was kind of hard coded to support just wrap near. And so there was like this uh, shit show situation where we're like, oh God, we put like X amount there of tokens and now people are not able to, to uh, deposit or withdraw their ST near. And I was like flipping out. Uh, and I was like, okay, this, this was a bad call. Like Lucy and myself, we're looking at each other like, oh, I don't know how we're going to go out with this one, man. But anyhow. And luckily, everything turned out good. There was uh, like Lucius. Uh, I I need to tip tip my hat. Everything I, I I'm speaking, and he's not here. Like he's the mastermind behind it. He's like total genius, and 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 definitely the the uh, the visionary inside the team, right? Um, tech related and also market related. Like he has like good good intuition, and so it was. Uh, let's say it was a little bit hectic, right? It was interesting, lots of learnings, but we found the gaps. Um, and so we started thinking how to give S senior more utility because, okay, farming and whatnot, don't get us wrong. We love you, Raf. We love you, Trisolaris. But at the end of the day, it's, 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 um, it's a short-term process for growth. And we said, why don't we use it for crowdfunding? Why don't we solve the problems that we've seen, the gaps uh, with launch pads? And so the first one is you shouldn't have to risk your main asset. In this case, near. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to exchange that for other project tokens. Because if you're bullish on near, then you want to keep near, your, keep your near, right? Um, and so we said, well, what if we propose that people exchange their staking rewards for the project tokens. And why don't we give it a one more and say, hey, so this is a mechanism that would uh, that will lock up your near, in this case, your ST near, and the near rewards go back to the project. And so we said, oh, that looks good. And then we go, what other things can we solve? Well, the and I said, well, giving giving your 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 project tokens to the to the launch pad. You should you shouldn't be held ransom for them. And so what we what we envision is how can you measure success in a launch pad if you arrive at your intended fundraising goal? Okay, perfect. So if you, you, you do not reach your goal, the stake near goes back to the backers and the project tokens go back to the project. Like we we were trying to de-risk uh mm -hmm. launching on near, right? That was uh, the other the, the one. The underlying uh, inspiration. Yes, Sorry, right? I'm taking this all in. Yeah, and, yeah and it's I, really interesting. So if, if if I like if I've got my stake near and I'm like I see Cheddar Farms, I'm like oh I like that. I can then allocate 
my rewards, a percentage of my rewards, not all of them, right? Just a percentage? No, or- all of them. The, the idea here is like, they're backers, right? They want to support you. And the idea is, yes, you put in a hundred year and then you're supporting with 10 year to the project. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So you're supporting that. And then if it doesn't, if, if not enough people find the, if the collective group doesn't rally behind the project, no matter what the time that goes by at the end, I get either near back my, my rewards or tokens in the same value oh, for no, 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 you, oh. you, you, so the project tokens go back to the project owner, right? Yeah. Because there's no demand for it. Yes. At the end of the day, the most important thing to, to understand is, are, do you have demand for your, 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 your underlying token of your project? Okay. That's very important. And that's okay. what an IDO does. And that's what a crowdfunding campaign does with meta pool, with meta yield. Sorry. Is that it allows you to get, uh, to, to understand if there's real demand for it. Right. Nice. And so, so that's something that, uh, every one of us, uh, has faith that has done when done in doing an IDO, like you're checking it every 12 hours, right? If you are sane, right? If not, you're checking it every 15 minutes or you're putting up on the second screen and it's refreshing automatically, <laughs> right? Uh, don't, don't download those, those uh, uh, Firefox add-ons. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyhow, um, and so, yeah, so that's the, 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 that's the, the, the goal for it. For us is de-risking launching on, on near in the sense of not so much price action or demand, but if you do not reach your goal, then the backers should get their whole ST near mm. and the project should get uh, the, the project token. Okay. But if it does succeed, the reverse happens. They get exactly. the, uh, they get the near, you get the token. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. It's really exactly. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. That's like one of those things. It's like, that's just like a solution that makes sense. And, and that's meta yield, right? That's, we just, uh, it's still really, really beta, right? Just, just be, be honest on that one. Uh, we, we are, we're, we're getting that contract audited uh, the next couple of weeks. Um, the, the reason for, for launching this with, with no, um, no audit behind it is that, we have 12 months, right? The IOUs are there. Mm. Right? Like it, everything's locked up. <laughs> the, the only problem that we will have, if the only fail point right now is that 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 we lose the the access to the to the uh, to that smart contract, right? Yeah. Uh, but but luckily enough, we we we've, we've done our, our fair share of homework there, and and rest assured, the the funds are secured and 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 there's no way to access it. Um, you will need to hack uh, Lucio's, Lucio's uh, computer one way or another. Uh, I'm <laughs> Don't putting, give I'm people put, any I'm ideas. Putting, <laughs> I'm, putting him, I'm putting him on the line, right? It's, like a, it, it's a bounty. It's a bounty, right? Uh, right. Uh, um. No, and, and, and so the, the idea here is, is the, the all, all funds are locked for 12 months. So it's not that the project is going to get the money right away, right? It's like everything is locked. They have to commit to deliver, right? And they need to deliver utility for the token. They, the project will select how much the lockup period, right? Okay. If, for example, you select six months, then that will mean that you get 5% of the, of the staking rewards, not the 10%, right? Because it's just six months. Or you do the 12-month lockup and you get the 10% APY from, from, the, uh, from the staking rewards. I was going to say, it's, it's important to mention, too, for lockup periods in terms of the, the token creating value, that the, the token from the project is then locked also for a period and gets distributed. So, for example, Cheddar Farm, uh, we just closed at 100% of our goals, which means that the maximum amount of Cheddar is going to be released, which I believe is a pool of 3 million tokens. Uh, and those tokens are then going to be released from a period, I believe it's late October through early January. So you get those tokens dropped over time. It's not like just a huge liquidity dump immediately, which is really another layer of like trying to insulate that that value. The technology is really being leveraged to be a strong tool. It's, like it's it's saying Near gives us the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. And so we're going to actually push those boundaries to build something better. You know, if you look at the the more simple cases of how most like, right, like IDOs maybe work, like that's a very basic structure. That's not overly technically complicated where now if you say, well, we're going to add some, it's 
complicate complex in the in the back end but we're going to make it really simple for the user and that's always really hard to do right like that that's always the challenge is how do i make this so simple for the end user and it's going to be a lot of complexity in the back end and so to hear that you guys are really thinking through all of the different components and there is a lot of complexity here that you are leveraging some of the technology for yet i think for the end user it sounds like I mean, it's really pretty straightforward of, you know, it's um, like Kickstarter like, right? Like I just, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to pledge a certain amount. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then I get my stuff back and, and I've now deep been de-risked of something going sideways. Yeah. So, and, 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 and let's be honest as well. We're, we're, we're de-risking, but not a hundred percent de-risking. There's always right, going to be a risk there. Of course, yeah. Um, that's why we're going to get the, the audit and, and more importantly is just understand that the lockup period is, it, it is into the project's best interest because now you have 12 months to build like true value Yeah, and it's going to be in, in, uh, yeah, we're going to test the color of, the, of their fabric, right? Pembroke finance, Shedder, uh, also, um, Dow records, right? Um, and it's gonna. We'll see who withstands the test of time, right? Yeah. Um, and it's and 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 let's be honest as well. It's so it's gonna be hit and a miss. We're we we're not expecting for every project to be a hundred percent successful. Uh, for us, is can we bring in more use cases for for what you can build on near? Uh, definitely, what you where where you can uh, generate value uh, through our liquid token as near. Mm -hmm. And and we're experimenting, right? We're at a really early phase. We're alpha beta testing everything we do. Uh, also, anything we say here is just not financial advice, anyone. I will uh, have please, a disclaimer too. <laughs> please, please uh, uh, this represents only my 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 thoughts, and that, that does not represent the thoughts of, of my team or 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 the project that I that that I co-founded. And so, for me, with Meta Yield is, we need to support more projects. And of course, projects need to launch one way or another. Mm -hmm. And launch paths, they're gonna have and and I'm and I'm I'm also like uh, challenging them, right? In the sense of like you we need to step up, we need to bring more value, right? Uh, we, do, doing doing what we did in 2021 is not gonna cut it. We need to do more, right? And you need to cater to near token holders first and foremost, then yourselves and your project, right? Because that's the only way we're going to continue to grow, and and so be prepared for when when the next uh, bull market comes in, or when the shine, uh, when the sun shines much brighter, right? <laughs> Which is yeah. still, to be honest, shines pretty bright. Like the mm -hmm. future is quite bright. Yes, it's brittle. Yes, the macroeconomic uh, uh, <laughs> inflation is all over the place, right? I would, yeah. uh, um, but anyhow, but at the end of the day, for us. One of the biggest opportunities that we see for for ST near for Meta Yield is how can we bring in uh, passive income, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Either passive income through exposure to other project tokens or passive income through liquid staking as well. And so that's definitely one of their one of the big things we're going to be pushing uh, also in our narrative at uh, at NearCon and the next couple of months right we are very bullish on the africa region we're very bullish of course in the latin american region uh we, we feel that is it, they're at the right time yeah. where projects can can flourish and more importantly that individuals can leverage the value accruing mechanism of a liquid staking asset and so hopefully we'll have some some more news uh as we progress as the year progresses uh, but yeah, like really excited, and uh, yeah, like I, I can't. Uh, it, it's uh, yeah, I I don't look at the charts, so that's why I'm always happy. Yeah. <laughs> only when it's time to pay to pay uh, the Amex card. That's what the only time that I'm not happy. Yeah. But other than that, uh, uh, yeah, the price action for me is just um, it's important, but it's not an urgent matter right now. And so important and urgent right now is building value for new protocol. And that's through decentralization and through supporting the new validator nodes coming in and chunk producer nodes. That's why we've uh, we participated in stake wars 
Um, and, and we're going to continue to support validator nodes because that's the underlying value creation mechanism for the protocol. Awesome. What a, I, I think that's a great way to end this podcast, man. That is a great call. Great final words, Joe, anything else you want to ask? I just, no, I mean, like we should just, we should book the next interview in like a couple months. Cause it's so much more to talk yeah. about. This, this was awesome. Thank you, Claudio, for your time. Yeah. Thank Good. you. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, so both of you are going to Neercon, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. So uh, send send a, a reply to the email with your uh, t-shirt size and hoodie size, please, as well. You so got we'll, it. We'll, Thanks. We'll, Sounds we'll good. We'll get you some stuff in. And I'll bring you some extra special stuff from Mexico as well. Okay? Oh, ah, love it. Yes, love it. Thank you so much, Claudio. This has been really, really looking forward to this. Have a good one. Stay Take safe. Care. Thank you very much, yeah. Wyatt Will. Stay safe, guys. Talk Take to you care. in a bit. Thank you, Bye. Wyatt Will. Appreciate it. Ready Layer One is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. You should not make any decision, financial investment, trading, or otherwise based on any of the information presented in this podcast without undertaking independent due diligence and consultant and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.